friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Chelsea Flower Show. It is a world-renowned flower show in London, in Chelsea, obviously, but it is something that I never really thought would be possible for me to go to because it is a bit on the expensive side and I feel like it's only recently that they actually started having houseplanty stuff involved in the Chelsea Flower Show. It was always like more outdoor garden sort of things before this. Last year was kind of the main year that I was seeing it through like the plant clinic, aka Soil Ninja, the Plant Rescuer, Liquid Gold Leaf, and Worcester Terrariums. Like seeing them there, it was kind of like my first big sort of introduction to it as something that was sort of within the realm of planty stuff and events, but it is not something that is typically financially accessible to a lot of people because it is expensive. Holy cow, it's expensive. So the only way I was able to go actually <laughs> is because my parents are in town at the minute and they wanted to go with me. Um, I proposed it as an idea, an expensive idea, that because I've wanted to go ever since I saw last year's houseplant clinic stuff. I've really wanted to go to Chelsea Flower Show and see the houseplant sort of sections, even though it's small. Like, I think it's really cool and I wanted to like experience it, but it's just not something that I could possibly do without their financial help. So thanks mom and dad for uh, making this video possible. <laughs> so we went this morning and I'm gonna talk about all the fun things we saw and did there. So yeah, before I get into it though, I just wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I hope you enjoy having a look around the Chelsea Flower Show. So we decided to go fairly early in the morning. I think it starts at 8 a.m. and closes at 8 p.m. I think we got there for around 9.30 in the morning in hopes that we would beat the heat because it is quite lovely in the UK at the minute. Blue skies, heat, warmth. I mean, I was wearing a sundress. A lot of people were wearing sundresses. That's kind of like the thing is people are wearing their little floral dresses and it's lovely. But we wanted to beat the heat and the sun as well as try and beat some of the crowds. But when we got there, it was already super duper duper busy. Like, it is a popular event. I don't think it was to a detriment really in most cases, especially for me and what I wanted, but I think if you were there to really see like the garden stuff, it might have made your day go by a little bit slower. So the first thing we did was kind of walk down the main drag of the show. It's kind of where they have a bunch of stalls all the way lined up down the whole thing, selling planty things, not necessarily plants, I think not plants at all, but like botanical homewares and outside shoes and like pruning shears and there was a hose lock booth which is the water sprayer that I use and pots and all that stuff. And there were, I feel like three notable ones for me personally, because as a house plenty person, I don't really care about garden decorations that much. I don't have a garden, so where would I put it? But the three that I cared about all tended to be sort of pots, because that's like one of the things that I can actually use. And the first one that I saw was something I had actually never seen before or even heard of. It was from the brand Husk which actually makes these really cool plastic feeling pots, but they are completely biodegradable. I'm pretty sure plastic free, made of like grains or something. I think the different colors are made of different things, but they are little pots that you can have. And then in like five to eight years, when you don't want it anymore, you can crush it up and put it in your compost pile or whatever, and it'll biodegrade and like go back to the earth. So it's, it's a really great, option for like a non-plastic thing because especially in the houseplant community there's so much plastic. I mean a lot of the pots I have are plastic. I try and get like recycled ones as much as possible but 
it's just sort of the industry standard and they tend to be a bit more expensive. I think these were pretty reasonably priced. I didn't end up getting any because I didn't want to carry them around all day, but I think I might be ordering myself some in the future because they did look super cool. The next stall that I saw that really piqued my fancy, of course, was Ocean Plastic Pots, who I have spoken to before. I actually have a few of their pots, and I think they're awesome because they're taking like plastic sea waste from up in Scotland. Like they had a map of all the different projects they have around where they're collecting like old ropes and fishing nets and stuff out of the sea and then melting that down into plastic plant pots, which is super duper cool. And I love the ones I have. I think it's a great project to help clean out the sea and gives this plastic, which will never biodegrade, a sort of new life. And you can see like the sort of imperfections in the pots and stuff. Not imperfections, just like the little accents, because um, they're never like quite perfect, which I think is cool and I quite like, because then you can see that it's actually made from something that wasn't originally meant for it. They're not like perfect, pristine, exact pots, but I really like them and it was really fun speaking to Ali about them and getting to hear a little bit more about their story. And then the last booth that I was actually really looking forward to, I didn't know if they were going to be there or not, but they're these pots from the brand called Frond which they make self-watering pots, which I'm super duper keen to try. I'm probably gonna try and get myself one fairly soon. They do tend to be a bit on the expensive side, but they're these glass self-watering pots with a ceramic insert, and they use cotton wicks, which I'm iffy about, but <laughs> that's all right. We can, we can all have our preferences, and I could switch out for something else if I didn't want to use a cotton wick, but they create these cool pots, and there's like different iterations you could do. So you could do it like a terrarium style, or you can get one that's the self-watering pot style, or the like free draining one, or there's a bunch of different combinations you could use as a vase and stuff like that. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity to do different things with it. And I think they're not quite at the point where they're selling them individually as pieces. So you can buy one and then buy the different pieces to do what you want. But they are a really cool product. And I think they won some sort of medal because they are also a more sustainable brand, which is awesome. So I was really, really looking forward to seeing them. And at their booth, I actually was able to meet Annie and Gemma, who are the people who run Green Rooms Market. If you're in the UK, you will have probably heard about it. They're like a traveling UK market and they go to different areas and they have different plant sellers and pot sellers and liquid gold leaf is there and soil ninja and grow gang and basically all of the more small independent planty businesses sell at these markets that are dotted throughout the UK and it was really really great to speak with them talked about like another plant swap and how we can potentially work together in the future which would be super cool but it was really nice to finally meet them because every time there's a green rooms market that's like somewhat near me. I tend to just like be away. <laughs> so I haven't been able to make it to one of them though I really, really want to. And I highly recommend them to anybody in the UK. If you haven't been to a green rooms market event, make your way there because it is really freaking cool. But it was really lovely speaking to them and really hearing more about what they're getting up to going forward and kind of seeing how we can work together to create a more inclusive, sustainable, planty future that like works for all of us. So yeah, that was, that was a, a fun chat that we had. From there, we kind of left the shopping stalls area and we walked around the Grand Pavilion, which is the big indoor bit. We walked around the outside of it because there was tons and tons and tons of like other kind of stalls, but like more bigger items. Like they were selling potting sheds and greenhouses and cold frames and like fountain sculptures and cabanas and outdoor furniture and stuff like that, which was quite fun to see. I had a lot of fun walking around there with my parents because they're more into outdoor gardening. They have a yard in LA and so they're always on the lookout for cool new things. And my dad grows things like tomatoes. So 
we were looking for like a cold frame and stuff for him potentially getting some ideas for how he can grow his vegetables better because they have a problem with squirrels in their garden at least but walked around there it wasn't as much my cup of tea because i don't have any outdoor space i think it's cool to see the stuff and the options but no, not really anything i can get into there were also these curated gardens that they had there which i honestly wasn't able to get any freaking footage of because they were so crowded it was like layers of like three or four people deep trying to look at this curated garden thing which it was just so crowded at that point that you really couldn't get a glance in without like waiting in essentially a non-uniform queue like the brits are usually good at queuing up and like making lines and everyone can see stuff. They weren't queuing here, they were just swarming. <laughs> so I didn't really get a good look at any of those unfortunately. And I do feel like that's a bit of a shame. So like if you were going to Chelsea, I would recommend getting there as early as possible, maybe even getting there at eight and maybe going directly to those sorts of areas if that's something that you're interested in seeing because otherwise you just don't really get a good chance to look at them because they're just so busy and there were loads of people filming stuff for different news things and there was celebrities and stuff there i didn't see anybody that i knew that was famous like there's no monty don or anything i didn't see monty don that would have been awesome but um there were like camera crews doing stuff for the bbc and this that and the other which was quite cool as well <laughs> And before we went into the Grand Pavilion, we got some ice cream because we needed a bit of a mid-morning snack. And the ice cream was really good. It was uh, slightly overpriced, but uh, it's what you get at the Chelsea Flower Show. And so we went inside the Grand Pavilion, which from my understanding was an area for specific plant sellers to sell things and display things, somewhat curated, but somewhat selling which was kind of interesting i mean i loved seeing all the plants that has big beautiful plants talking about like the plant of the year and stuff like that because the rhs the royal horticultural society if i haven't said that already pick out a plant of the year and market that i guess <laughs> i'm not really entirely sure how it worked but it was quite fun to look at all of the different sort of installations they had in there and all the plants lots of bromeliads and outdoor flowers and i loved looking at the cacti and succulent sections with my parents because they're obviously from the states they're in la and it is hot there and so pretty much the only things that they can grow from sort of this fair are the cacti and succulents because they're getting basically full sun all day in their yard so they can grow like fruit trees i think they have some citrus trees and stuff like that peaches but also like cacti and succulent gardens which is pretty cool so looking at all of those and getting ideas for them was quite fun but other than that the sort of like grand pavilion it was fun to walk around and it was like super busy again as well but it it, it wasn't quite my area still it wasn't the stuff that i was there for i was pretty much mostly there for the houseplant studio things that they have which we ended up finding after going in the grand pavilion there was i think five or six houseplant studios that I don't know if you apply with a idea or you get approached by the RHS or what to have a booth at the Chelsea Flower Show, but there were five there that I spoke to or went in and they're not really selling the houseplants, they're more of a conceptual thing about thinking about houseplants in different ways and how we can work on growing the houseplant culture in like society i guess so the first one that i ended up going into was from beard and daisies which is a U local uk houseplant seller and they created the plant school which was a little tiny classroom sort of thing so walking in it was immediately laid out like a sort of classroom with like loads of kids stuff little journals a chalkboard and 
like the kids backpacks and jackets and stuff but also tons of house plants and their whole thing for this little studio was about getting children and the youth of today into house plants and plants in general because I mean they are the future of our world and if we can get them into this sort of hobby it can be a bit more sustainable and not necessarily sustainable ecology wise but like long term but it was basically set up to like share how we want to be keeping houseplants and planting in general within society and teaching children and the youth of today about the hobby and the the joy that you can get from plants as well as like the ecological value and it was a cool little conceptual piece. The next one that I saw was the laundry room which was made by Gavin Green. Some of you might remember I went up and toured their glass house I guess a couple of months ago now and they created this laundry room because the main thing they do with their plants because they're a UK plant grower which is very very rare there's only a handful of them I can talk about that a little bit more later when I talk about another one but their main thing is that they are a peat free grower and how they can do that is that they sterilize their soil so they they can recycle it and reuse it and so they created a laundry room with plants talking about the like cleaning process and they had a washing machine with soil on top being steamed which is how they sterilize it in their glass houses and stuff so that was quite a cool thing to see and talking about how we can continue to be peat free which is important. I then went into the next studio thing which was one made by Grow Tropicals and their whole thing in theirs was about the language of plants and how words that we use in English mean a completely different thing in a sort of botanical context and so they had some plants around and they had words on the wall and talked about their English use as well as their botanical use. That was quite interesting. They were actually the only ones who didn't have people like people from their group standing outside like talking and explaining their booth to anybody. I don't know if I just didn't catch them at the right time or something but I was in that whole area for maybe an hour or an hour and a half and I didn't see any of the Grow Tropicals people which I was a bit bummed about because I was excited to see them and talk to them about their booth but it is what it is so I was marginally disappointed about that um, but that's okay. They also had this like big terrarium in the middle which was very cool and had like a very sculptural thing. It was beautiful and I'm glad that I got to see it even if their booth wasn't the most like conceptual if that makes sense. Next up I went into the Botanical Boys booth. I think they make the terrariums for the terrarium shop up by King's Cross which is pretty cool but they had this sort of interior design space bringing in like antique objects from I think South Africa because one of their partners is South African and has these really cool South African antique furniture and sculptures and objects and art and stuff like that and so mixing that with terrariums and the sort of cool sculptural curated objects and it was a really beautiful room and it was fun to speak to them about it. They also had these big um, terrariums outside that they built and they weren't enclosed. They were a terrarium in the sense that they were on a timer that shot out mist and they had a grow light in the top and the plants inside of them were plants that you could normally put in a terrarium but you probably wouldn't because they would get too big and so they created these giant terrarium-ish things to kind of create the concept which was really really cool. So the last studio and actually probably my favorite one was the one by Tropical Plants UK who are another UK plant grower. I think they only just launched their online website so I would definitely recommend checking it out if you can and they even grow crazy 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 Thai constellations which are beautiful. They're the only people in the UK that are growing Thai constellations in the UK. Normally we get plants shipped in from the Netherlands so I really enjoyed theirs because 
The main thing in theirs was a giant living wall that spanned the whole bit of the studio and it was next to a window on one side but it was next to a wall on the other and so they had planted out this green wall specifically for this space because they knew that one of the sides was going to be getting bright natural light while the other side was going to be mostly shaded. So they planted one side with plants that would enjoy getting that bit more light so variegated monsteras, brighter loving plants and then faded that kind of into ones that were more tolerant of shade and so those were things like ferns and aglianemas and stuff like that and so looking at that sort of gradient from light to dark and how they put them together was really really important because one of the things that they wanted to like share is that instead of buying a plant and then figuring out where to put it in your home it's best to figure out where you want to plant in your home look at the light look at the environment you can give it and then buy a plant afterwards that fits into that space and like that location they also had a stationary bike which powered their booth as well as this big crown sculpture somewhere else in the Chelsea Flower Show and that was quite cool because you would pedal on the bike for maybe like a minute or two and it would give the booth 10 minutes of light and light up the crown sculpture elsewhere and so they were essentially like saving the Chelsea Flower Show some power um, and I thought that was fun and interesting and a bit more of an experiential bit of their booth that a lot of the others didn't have. It was a bit more interactive in my opinion. So I really enjoyed them and talking to the people who run that one. But just outside their booth, I was able to meet Joe Bagley who is at UK Houseplants on Instagram and he's been on like the BBC and in the news and all kinds of stuff. He was so so sweet. I loved speaking to him for a little bit. We talked about our favorite plants and stuff like that and I might be giving him some Maranta cuttings at some point. So Joe, if you're watching this, hit me up. I will send you some Maranta cuttings because he's never had a Maranta before. So I thought why not share the love and maybe do a swap or something like that. So yeah, he was super, super lovely. I was so pleased to get to meet him. And yeah, he was kind of like the only person that I recognized of like people there, even though he didn't know who I was. <laughs> so yeah, I had a lot of fun speaking to people and like kind of networking, doing my thing, talking to other planty people and about plants and house plants. And that part was so, so much fun. And I am hoping that in the future they can have more house plenty sections and maybe expand that to more possibilities because that would be so like i feel like it would be more inviting to the like younger generation a little bit because one thing i did notice at the flower show given i did go on a member's day i do have a an rhs membership but due to the cost of the flower show being so high, it kind of makes it inaccessible for the younger generations because we don't necessarily have the money. Like I genuinely could not have gone if my parents weren't there. So it, it felt like the, most of the people there were of maybe the boomer generation, which I, there's no problem with that and like they're probably the people who have most of the gardens in the UK anyway but I just I felt like it wasn't a very young crowd at all it was like I felt very young in it and kind of the only place where I saw people that were a little bit younger was more in the houseplant section which I think makes sense because a lot of us don't have that sort of outdoor garden space that you would probably <laughs> like want to go to Chelsea Flower Show for. So yeah, I think I think having more house plenty things in the future would really benefit the RHS if you're if they're watching this. Um have more house plant things because that's really cool and also maybe have like cheaper tickets on like raffle or something like that to help get more young people in and seeing the whole thing because it is a really cool thing and getting more like we are the future of this world, 
and so if they want to continue doing stuff like this they, they're going to have to make it a little bit more accessible to like the general public I think which who knows if they will or won't <laughs> But kind of speaking of that, I did have a section that I went to after this um, of a bunch of container gardens or balcony gardens, which were literally designed for small spaces. So people with just a balcony or just a tiny little garden in their front or back where they can plant some stuff. So that was nice to see those sort of options being a possibility because especially if you're living in a place like London, you probably don't have much outdoor space. So capitalizing and using as much of that as possible was like it was good to see but yeah then I had a Pims which we like it was very expensive it was 16 pounds for this cup of Pims outrageous I know but thanks dad and we left we didn't stay for super duper long because a lot of the sort of more outdoor stuff wasn't really within our wheelhouse like my parents can't buy anything here to like bring back to the states it just doesn't really make sense so there's definitely some stuff that I missed and I wasn't able to see because it was crowded or busy or just wasn't that interested in or could afford <laughs> but it was a really fun experience and I do hope that I am able to get to go to it again in the future and hopefully they have more houseplanty stuff because that's the stuff that I enjoy. So yeah, that was my trip to the RHS Chelsea Flower Show. I really hope you enjoyed kind of coming along with me, me sharing it with you because I feel like most people probably won't be able to go because of the cost of it. So the like being able to share it with you was something that I really wanted to do. But yeah, I really enjoyed my time there and I hope that I can get to go again in the future and that they get more houseplanty stuff because that's the stuff that I like. I know they're not doing the whole Chelsea Flower Show for me, but if they could. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is it. Before I sign off, I want to also give a huge thank you to the newest members of my Good Growing fam over on Patreon. So thank you so much, Emmeline, for joining. I hope you enjoy it over there and get all the fun bonus content that you desire. Otherwise, I hope that the rest of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future, whether or not you want me to continue going to houseplanty events and bringing you with me, let me know and I can make that happen. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.